Bank robbery. Whereabouts is the closest bank? It's right around the corner. Alright, cheers, thank you. Oi. Oi. Ah! One of the most American things since obesity, the military industrial complex, and mass shooting. Did you know that America's first bank heist occurred in 1798? It was an astounding success. Up until the moment one of the robbers died of yellow fever, and the other got caught by depositing his money into the same bank he just robbed. We've all fantasized about it at some point. What if I had a gun? What if I had my nan's knitted balaclava? The hell is this? It's all they had. What if there were more police officers in the US than registered firearms? What if you just wanted your payday too? You see, I need my payday too. Grenade! <laughs> One moment you're playing the Breaking Bad video game. The next, you're playing Metal Gear Solid. I'm the one who knocked. Gotta go now. What? Of Payday 2 is obvious. Steal shit. Rob shit. Murder shit. Under the employ of the enigmatic hacker 4chan, you have roughly 24 different characters to choose from, including a man who can't speak a lick of English, <laughs> the happiest man in Sheffield, I just woke up in a steaming mood, yeah? Because I live in a soul! It's a I hate the place! I it's full of it's a and, of course, oh for fuck's sake. We may be in Washington, but Los Angeles will forever be my country. Change obsession with trying to paint the main characters as the good guys. Are we the good guys or the bad guys? In spite of the fact that you and your buddies commit literal acts of terror to get what you want. Not to mention the countless murders, manslaughters, and drug-related felonies you commit throughout your career. Last I checked, the good guys don't bring flamethrowers to a hospital. Are we the baddie? No, the real customization comes in the form of the masks. To say they have a distinct variety of customization options would be an understatement. Holy shit, there are so many fucking masks in this game, with nearly as many materials, patterns, and colors to choose from. I remember a friend who really liked this mask for some reason. Little does the community know that the objective is not actually to commit robbery, but to look as ridiculous as possible while doing so, and I wouldn't have it any other way. The same could be said for weapon customization. I am not shitting you when I say that you can actually buy a nerf gun and use it in your robbery. All of these customization options you earn from the card game at the end of each successful heist, although you can alternatively buy your weapon attachments and upgrades through Continental Coins. Yes, the, the, the John Wick- don't, don't worry, I will get to the fucking lore of this shit show, just 
Bear with me. Said continental coins can also be spent on upgrading your safe house, which yields literally no other rewards as far as I know, other than looking prettier. Like, hey, you can play hockey. You can change the paint job of your escape van, harass Ron Perman while he shitposts about Drumpf for the 50th fucking time. However, no amount of continental coins can cure John Cleese's stage 6 dementia. Oh, yes, yes, I suppose you would. You can also find color-coded packages scattered across each map, which reward you with even more weapon attachments once you collect an adequate amount. A system which baffles me to no end, because how the fuck is this wheelchair-bound hobo able to conveniently sneak these packages into guarded military installations and the fucking White House? Is he zillion OP? There are two ways to engage your heists, loud and stealth, except when they say loud, they fucking mean it. You so much as fucking sneeze on federal property, you'll be swarmed by legions of the National Guard's finest within literal seconds. I'm not even joking. As soon as the alarm goes off, the police show up with a record-breaking 20-second response time, numbering in the fucking hundreds. And if that wasn't ridiculous enough, you also have to contend with tasers, shields, CIA ninjas, who yes, are in fact ninjas, and yes, glow in the dark, fucking juggernauts with miniguns, automated machine gun turrets, like, what, what the fuck is this doing here? This should be in fucking Afghanistan. Snipers. Ooh. Yeah, fuck the snipers. They're an area denial enemy that one shot kills you with no telegraphed attack and I fucking hate them. Saying that knowing sniper spawns is part of learning the map is all well and good, but it doesn't change the fact that they completely retard the game's pacing and flow. And it's near impossible to know whether or not they're actually there or not before they've blown your fucking head off. You can't change my mind on this, the snipers suck and I fucking hate them. But admittedly, not as much as I hate the medic. A little dumb, but they heal other enemies, leaving both him and the target stationary, follows packs of other enemies, and moves at a fairly regular pace with fairly low health. Accessing the in-game FBI database reveals to you that killing a police medic will attain you a Geneva Convention violation. Somehow, over the course of burglarizing this man's house, I have become a war criminal. It happens to the best of us. The reason for this overwhelming display of excessive force is probably due to the fact that every single weapon in this game is overpowered as shit. If I told you that robbing a 7-Eleven with a minigun was the closest this game gets to a realistic depiction of an armed robbery, you'd think I've gone mad. Unfortunately, this is not the case. As far as I'm aware, this is the only game where you get to kill a man with a wad of cash. A murder so ridiculous that the police won't even dream of charging you, for the audacity of such absurd implications would be too much for them to handle. If you get the slightest inkling that a gun is a piece of shit, you're simply not playing the game right. Half of my 2000 hours in this game are of me fucking around with a gunsmith, trying to figure out how to make my dual pistols fire nuclear payloads. I refuse to tell you the exact formula to these builds. The joy of this game comes from banging on your character with a hammer until you find exactly what you're looking for. But I will say this, you can learn black magic that causes the damage inflicted from headshots with sniper rifles to be inflicted on everyone immediately around the target, especially the civilians. Or hey, strap a silencer to an MG42 and turn what was to be a simple drugs bust into the D-Day landings. Coupled with the skill trees are perk decks, all of which complement widely different playstyles. For example, if you want to turn into Neo from the Matrix, just grab the Rogue perk deck, shed all that armor fat, and prepare to dodge your way into early retirement. What are you trying to tell me? That I can dodge bullets? No. Or invest in the Anarchist deck. Oops, my anarchy symbol. Which essentially turns you 90% bulletproof and allows you to regain armor through extreme violence. Indicative of this community's mindset, many will cite the Stoic perk deck as their favorite, as it allows you to tank a disgusting amount of damage through your crippling alcohol dependency. Stealth, however, is a completely different animal altogether. Stealth is amazing. Never before have I had so much fun twiddling my thumbs while I wait for the drill to chew through the bank vault. Or by getting punked by the AI's asinine pathfinding. Stealth is nothing but a waiting game, and don't get me started on the civilians. It's actually impressive how little of a shit the civilians give about the gang of armed clowns turning DC into Baltimore. You could be in the middle of a gunfight in a shopping mall, and yet they'll still find time to file a complaint to the manager. They are extremely uncooperative. They won't heed your commands to get down on the ground until after you actually start screaming at them through your monitor.
Now, the game discourages you from senselessly killing them because it deducts funds from your in-game payout and leaves you with less hostages to trade if one of you gets arrested. However, if you stealth by yourself, like I do, you only have so many zip ties to go around. And once you reach a high enough level with a rich enough bank account, well... It really is a miracle how you and your boys keep avoiding jail in spite of the atrocities you commit. You must have one hell of a lawyer. What are you doing, detective? What are you doing talking to my client without me present? You sneaky Pete. Oh, <laughs> uh, what else is there? Uh... Oh yeah, uh, penis drawings. Much of the larger heists come with a pre-planning option, which expand upon the strategizing of your robberies, as well as offering a stellar medium for artists to express themselves. Some heists contain drivable vehicles that, no matter the shape, speed, or size, will 100% mow down literally everything in its path with zero mercy. <laughs> then, uh, there's smaller miscellaneous stuff, like gambling in the Golden Grin Casino. And, well, there's, um... I'm not really getting around talking about the story, am I? Originally, an alliance of three kings who shared control of the world and attempted to steal an item. The dentist is implied to have been operating for longer than what makes sense. Cock and ball torture, or CBT, he's occasionally known as Pine Shaker. Figured things were gonna get easier when two came in to help with the missing Lindenhurst pages of Cagliostro's book. I mean, for fuck's sake, the game escalates from robbing a corner shop to stealing nukes and raiding the White House. You got some fucking Illuminati bullshit going on, some fucking ancient aliens, what? Uh, Mayan gold, the Ark of the Covenant, Wu-Tang Clan, Donald J. Trump, fucking this shit fell under the White House. And then fucking Bane gets infected with the fucking Left 4 Dead vibe.